Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today we're out here on the river braving the winter weather and we're talking about one of my very, very favorite ways to chase these winter steelhead and that's with a spinner. We're gonna talk top to bottom, color, size, technique, and types of river that we wanna look for while using these spinners. So stay tuned, you guys are gonna learn a ton today. So the first component we're gonna talk about is probably one of the most important, and that is rod selection. The rod is so important as far as length, size, and power of the rod, because you need to be able to feel the action of these spinners as you fish them. Today, my very favorite rod for these spinners, one of the best ones I've ever fished, honestly, is the Okuma Guide Select 9 foot, 8 to 17 pound rod. Why I like this is it's a spin model. You can also get that in a bait caster. Why I like this rod so much is it's solid backbone. When that fish grabs, you wanna be able to feel it and you wanna be able to set the hook, as well as be able to have enough sensitivity to really feel the water currents and the bottom of the river as you drift these spinners down through. So that nine foot, eight to 17 is one of the best ratios of length to weight that I've found. So what I have this reeled with is a Kaimar C40 spinning reel. I love this reel because it has a lot of pickup. Honestly, it has a big spool so you can fight these bigger fish that you attract with these spinners and not ever get spooled. So C40 is my choice. You can go down to the C30 as, or the yeah, C30 as well. What I have on here and what's probably the most important is my 30 pound braided line. Why I stick with the 30 pound P line is because of the diameter of it. I don't want to go up into the 40s and 50s in this diameter of line, mainly because of the drag and the water current and the casting ability. You can cast a lot further with a light line and that being a braided line. So keeping it from the 20s to 30s in this braided line is crucial because of the casting ability and the, and the, the ability to get it down in the water currents without the diameter of that line affecting how your spinner is working. So the other very, very key component here, you see I don't have a, a swivel on my setup here, is my blood knot. I combine the blood knot to the uh, to my braided line with 20 pound P-Line Tactical Fluorocarbon. Why I like that tactical is it's a smaller diameter than the SS and it allows to make a lot better knot with that 30 pound uni knot, the blood knot in between that fluorocarbon and braided line. So coming down to my spinner here, which I use just a normal fisherman's knot. This one obviously is beat to heck for me bouncing it down the river bottom. This is an RB spinner. We'll go over spinners here in a second, but with that 20 pound all the way down to my spinner, you can use a multitude of knots. I have just a normal clinch knot here. Um, but not having a swivel is, works really well using these spinners because you get instant reaction from the current and that spinner blade. So when you have a swivel, that swivel's spinning as well as the blade, so you don't get the same reaction from the water currents as you do with that line straight to the spinner here. So that is the way I like to set up. It's perfect. The nine foot rod is great for this adaption and uh, I can't think of anything better to use. So what we're gonna move to now over here is our spinners. So what I have lined up here for you guys is pretty much every kind of spinner that you can find on the market. Each one of them work pretty well. Some that I have preference to are here. Uh, others that I don't use quite as much also work well, but I like each and every one of them for its own reason. So what I have here are my favorites, which is the R&B spinners. These guys, you notice quickly I have sidewash hooks on almost all of these. You can see this one's rusty because I'm about to cut it off and show you guys. But I like the R&B spinners with this bullet blade, of course, because of the way they go through the current. The way they cut through the current line, they get down and deep, and well, as well as being able to drift them down the bottom of the river without getting snagged. That's why I switched to that sidewash hook, which is very imperative in my mind, is to switch to that sidewash so you can effectively fish these spinners without losing your gear all day. So what we have here, though, is blue-green. You can obviously see all colors work very well for any kind of steelhead or salmon, depending on water color. So I would always encourage you to have multiple colors of spinners as you go to the river. That being said, on a clear day, I'm probably gonna go with more of a blue or a green color, less intrusive. With dirty water, I might go to a gold blade or a pink or chartreuse or any of the other options that present a lot flashier presentation in like a dirty water situation. What we have here, as you can see, these two are bell-bodied spinners. What these do is, like the Vibrax by Blue Fox, it creates and it resonates a very loud sound as it goes through the water as well as has a flashy presentation. So it's a crucial to have a little bit of both as you go to the river so that you can key in on both those styles of biting from those steelhead given the pool or riffle that you're fishing. So also what I have here sitting by is not something that a lot of people have seen as Northwest, Northwest Extreme Outfitters. 
the spinner here and this is a very very heavy spinner and that's why I like it is it's good for fishing the deep pools um, and getting down and in that strike zone in spots that you normally couldn't get one of these lighter spinners down to so again all spinner colors work great it's really good to have each and every kind and having that side wash hook on the spinner is probably one of the biggest reasons why I think they need to be fished a certain way. So, because you want them down and low in the water column. So we're gonna show you here in just a second how to switch these side wash blades out. Uh, but my favorite is the Mustad 2 aught side wash hook. It's a great length and it has a really interesting curl to it which keeps those fish on almost every time. So that's what I like about the spinners. All colors work. Take them to the river and make sure not to leave home without them. So as I said a moment ago, it's very important in my mind to switch out your treble hooks with a side wash hook for these spinners when you want to spinner fish because the method that you want to use in fishing these spinners is getting them down into the strike zone. So not having the treble hook on the line allows you to skip it across the rocks and across structure much easier without having those three points of contact on that spinner. So I'm going to show you guys really quick how to actually cut these uh, hooks off of the off of the spinner and put on your side wash hook. So this is the normal typical uh, treble hook that comes with most of any of the spinners that you can find. What I like to do here is of course using my Gerber salt water pliers. I love these because they have really good uh, handles here so you can crimp down without breaking those handles off on a cold day especially. So what I want to do here is not try to cut the whole hook shank off at once. I'm actually going to cut each side. Obviously this one's a little bit worn and rusty so it'll cut a little easier but I'm going to take those two those two cutters there. I'm going to wrap them right around the shank of that hook and I'm going to squeeze hard until it busts. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that spinner blade fall. Grab that end of that deal there and bust that hook right off. And there we go, we got a free spinner. So set that down, make sure to throw it in the garbage can and not leave it on the beach for somebody to step on. I'm gonna grab my side wash hook here. And again, this is a two-aught Mustad hook. You can find these at any of your outdoor stores or anywhere Mustad products are sold. Really, really nice hooks, nice and strong, rated at like 200 pounds. So you're never gonna lose a fish. What I'm gonna do now is take this same bit of pliers, I'm gonna what, what's key here is to crimp this down far enough so that your spinner cannot come off. I've seen it happen many times on the river where somebody didn't squeeze that side wash down hard enough and that spinner actually had the hook come right off of it when a, spin, when a fish took it. So I'm going to take that, put it about halfway down into my plier grip there. With both hands I'm going to squeeze down until that thing pushes tight down onto the shank of the hook and there you're ready to go. You got your side wash hook. One of the other tricks that I really like to do a lot with these side wash hooks, the must add why they're so good is because they're somewhat outcropped already but I like to take my, my pliers here, put about a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch bend in that, in that hook outcropping it to the side to where that fish grabs and it actually really twists and digs into the side of its mouth when that fish grabs it. So switching that side wash hook out is key. I have to do it or else I lose a lot of gear with clients. So it's really recommended to change that out every time. All right guys, so now we're down here on the bank and we're gonna talk about the fun part. And it's actually fishing these spinners. First off, what I'm gonna cover is, is locating water and then having your sunglasses. So what we have in front of us here is one kind, there's one to two to three kinds of spinner water that you can effectively fish a spinner in. What we have behind us here is more of a boulder garden or a riffle. Why we would choose this kind of run is because of the broken surface, the multitude of boulders and, and structure for the fish to hang out behind, as well as the area we have to fish. We want to work the entire spot. So first and foremost, I'm lost on the river without my polarized sunglasses. So especially when I'm fishing a spinner and I want to cover structure, by covering rock to rock to rock, I want to be able to see those rocks and that structure and that, that channel in the river so I know where to place that spinner with each cast. So I'm going to show you how to fish this riffly run. It's a little bit different than you'd fish a deep run or, or a big pool and we'll show you that here in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through this run and show you really how to start and get the basics of fishing a spinner. So I got my, my RMB here, my bullet blade again with the side wash hook. First and foremost what I always preach with, in all these tutorials guys is close, middle, far. It's every fisherman's reaction to stand up to the river and cast to the other side. But that's really not what we want to do when we start to fish these spinners. You always want to start in front of you. Where I always tell my clients to start is where you stop seeing bottom. 
If you can't see the bottom at a certain point in the river, that's a good place to make your first cast because you want to see if you can catch the fish there rather than the fish on the far side in the sweet spot. Sometimes you'll get two. That's how you end up upping your odds and catching more fish. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start close, casting at about 45 to 90 degrees upriver. You don't really want to go any time upriver because you're going to have to reel a lot faster and you're actually going to have a hard time catching up to your spinner and you're going to snag in this situation in this riffle or a boulder garden. So I'm going to start my cast right at 90 degrees at my close cast. I'm going to make three casts in each spot. So I'm going to cast close. I'm going to land that about 30 feet out and I'm going to point my tip right at that spinner only pulling the spinner enough to keep the blade spinning in the current. Why I do that is as soon as that braided line and that spinner hits the water, your spinner bait starts to spin. So your reel and that current do the exact same thing. So as that spinner hits in the close cast, you're gonna reel a little bit faster. But as I start to work my way across the river, I'm gonna start letting the current do the work as it takes my spinner down river instead of my reel. And what I wanna do is I wanna anticipate the bottom. You don't wanna cast and wait for the bottom. You wanna cast and work your spinner down to the bottom and then across. So as I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna go my third cast, or second cast, a little bit farther, about halfway across. I'm gonna keep my, again, my tip pointed right at that spinner, reeling only enough to see that blade spinning and keep that tension, letting that line carry and pull against my spinner and keep it spinning all the way through. And as you get it down river to about 90 degrees, you're gonna bring it back in. So now I'm gonna do my third cast, which is my far cast, and this is gonna be much more of a swing. You wanna let the current do all of the work. You're really not gonna to have to use the reel at all. So I'm gonna go all the way across the river with my far cast. I'm gonna point my tip at it again, reeling it tight, engaging that blade, and following that spinner straight down river with my tip the whole time. And why I do that is because it maximizes the sensitivity. You have that straight point of contact from your spinner all the way to your fingertips, so you can feel every little flutter and flop as that blade goes through there, and you can definitely feel the bottom and the fish when it happens. So again, anticipating the bottom, you let that spinner swing down into the water column, and really the only time we're fishing here is from about 90 degrees to 45. Once you've worked that spinner past that 45 degree mark, it's pretty much out of the water column when it comes to the surface. So what I'm gonna do to counteract that is use my, my rod tip. And how I do that is by putting it up when I want it to come to the surface. If you look here, if I go up in the air, that spinner is right up on the surface, just like so. If I point my tip down, it goes right down to the bottom. So I wanna use that and manipulate that all the way through the run where I know I'm about to hit bottom, I lift up and I pull tension on my spinner. If I want it to go back down, I reel up and I point my tip back down and I let that thing go right back down to the bottom. So using your rod tip to control the spinner depth is what's key here. So, and again, now that I've talked my close middle far, my other thing I always preach is to keep moving. So now that I've made those three casts, I'm gonna take two steps down river, religiously. This is probably the most important part of the spinner fishing is starting at the top of a hole and working your way all the way through, whether it be a big deep pool or a shallow riffly tail out like so. So I've made those three casts. I'm gonna take two big boy steps down river to this next little bird rock here. And I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna make a middle cast. Straight to the middle, I'm gonna reel that tight presenting it nicely with my point, my tip pointed right at that blade the whole time, following it through. And you see I'm reeling a little more this time because I made a shorter cast. And that blade will actually fall faster in that shorter cast. So now that I've made that, I'm gonna go to the far side, keep my tip pointed, let that sink for just a second, engage that spinner with your tip the way I just did, and start following it again all the way through using that current speed to control your spinner. You see I'm lifting up to bring it up, bring it back down, and we're bringing it back in. So, and again, I made those three casts. I'm gonna take two big boy steps down river and I'm gonna start it again, right to the middle. Swing it across, covering the structure. And what this does it ultimately is it creates like a mathematical breakdown of the hole. You start at the top, you go close, middle, far, and really you leave no rock unturned as you work your way back through the run all the way through the tail out. So, that's why I like to use these spinners, is it's so easy to cover so much water in a short amount of time, as well as it entices that really, really incredible grab that the fish always have when they take a spinner blade. So keep that in mind. We're gonna go down to the next hole and show you guys how to fish something a little bit deeper and a little bit more boily. All right, everybody, so now what we have behind us here is a different style of run that we're gonna fish a spinner in. Not as, a tip, not as much of a typical run, but a great spot to actually catch these fish off guard and target them in a different way in these deeper holes. So what we're gonna do that's a little bit different and what I didn't really cover in the last video is how you present that blade. With steelhead, it's contrary to salmon, uh, any of the salmon species, I, I believe steelhead are more instinctual on the, the speed of the blade when you fish for them in the winter time. So there's not so much of the vibration 
or that constant speed that you need to have when you're fishing for salmon or, or coho or chinook, but with the steelhead, they're much more of a visual fish. They don't rely as much on reaction or that sound. So what you wanna make sure is to get the right speed of your spinner down through a deep run like this. And the way we're gonna do that is casting a little bit more upriver than I'd recommend in any other kind of run. So what we're gonna do, we start right at the top here. This run comes out of a shallow riffle and dumps off into a deep bucket. The way I'm gonna cover this is by casting more of a 45 up river and allowing that spinner to come straight down river and be pulled by the current so that it has a very slow lope and it just basically falls through the hole. So the way I'm gonna do that, again, is casting at 45, grabbing that edge of that current seam on the far side, not so much starting close, and presenting that spinner in a straight down river presentation. So the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna point my tip again right at that spinner, let it fall as it comes into the hole, just barely spinning and loping as it comes through, and reel it in until about, you can see it again, right about 15 feet off the bank and bring it in. I'm gonna do it a couple more times. I'm gonna go 45 up river. Let that thing fall, bring it to attention, and again, create that straight down river presentation. And what that's doing is it's starting to pull that river, or that, fit, that spinner down in the water column as it goes down the river. So what that means is that it's going down and across and coming at these fish at a down and away angle. And what that presents is an easier opportunity for them to not expend any energy to chase your spinner. They're going down, they're closing their fins, turning and grabbing that spinner as it goes past them. <clears throat> and that's crucial in these deeper holes and even fast water. So creating that line angle, creating that current drag with your line and pulling that spinner down river is what's gonna make you successful. And again, what I'm gonna do after I've made my first three casts, I'm gonna take two steps down river. So, and I'm gonna start over again. And 45 up. Let that spinner fall, reeling it straight down river in a slow, steady presentation. Not relying as much on feeling that spinner blade working, but just knowing it's falling and loping as it goes deeper into the hole. And the fun part of this is it's a real slack line grab, so when those fish do come screaming after that spinner and grab it, it's a ride of a lifetime. So it's the reason why I love to fish spinners. <clears throat> Likewise, what you always want to make sure, guys, is to have these spinners in your box, have a variety of colors and different things to use, and make sure to have them in your back pocket. It's a great way to clean up a run, and of course, it's a lot of fun to feel the grab as these fish aggressively hit these blades. All right, guys and gals, well, that pretty much covers all the basics of how to use these spinners to effectively catch these winter steelhead. I love to use them. It's a really fun bite, and it's a really great way to key in on their aggression when nothing else is working. So stay tuned, you guys. If you want to see more, be sure and go down here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll get new videos coming to you every single day and a lot of these really helpful ones that help you get out and learn how to better yourself and catch some more of these beautiful fish that we have here. So thanks for tuning in guys. Be sure to like and share this video out there. Again, subscribe below. We'll see you out there on the river.